Hi, uh, my name is Chirodeep. Uh, I'm a photographer and today I'm going to take you through one of my projects uh, which is about Bombay's public clocks. Uh, some of you may have actually seen the exhibition that happened recently called Scene Time uh, Public Clocks of Bombay at the Maxwell Memorial. So when I usually talk to people and ask them about Bombay's public clocks, most people can come up, you know, they, they probably recollect about three or four. Everybody knows the Rajabai Tower. They, they can, uh, they come up with BT Station, some even remember Crawford Market. A few, if you were to push it, they might even remember the David Sassoon Library. But I think what most people wouldn't know of <coughs> are uh, more obscure buildings like the Sugar Market building at Karnak Bandar or that railroad station has a clock or that JJ Hospital has had a clock, it doesn't anymore or Anand Nivas at Girgaon uh, near Kotachiwari has a clock. You may not have noticed that. So my uh, search for Bombay's public clocks uh, has been going on for the last 23 years and what I've found are about 81 such buildings right through the city. This geographically it stretches from the Susun Dock uh, in South Bombay going right up to uh, Ville Parle where there's a private residence of the Bhagat family. Uh, and the oldest clock that I, that I came across is one which is uh, in, in, the, in the naval dockyard. Uh, it's, a, it's of 16th century vintage and a Portuguese uh, sundial. And the most recent one would probably be this one uh, at the LNT Business Park at Sakibia Road. Anyway, so uh, the thing we found in, in, in the course of looking for these clocks, I found, uh, found them on, on public buildings, for instance, like markets, hospitals, cinemas, uh, a mill, uh, a couple of stadiums. Uh, buildings on on uh, which are owned by the railways or uh, which come under the purview of of the docks or the Bombay Port Trust uh, clocks on top of educational buildings, religious buildings. Uh, you will find clocks on churches, agiaris, temples, mosques. You know in Bombay there are residential apartments and two private residences. There are office buildings, a few of them, many of which are, happen to be on, on top of in buildings that are owned by the insurance companies. And there are obviously a handful of memorials and gateways, like say for instance a drinking water fountain erected by a philanthropic merchant or uh, uh, a gateway like the Prince's Triumphal Arch near Cadbury Junction. So this, this has become, this project actually, though it started out as, as a way of you know, photographing architecture, but I think it eventually went on, it became an excuse for me to look at the city and photograph the city. Uh, it kind of also begs the question, why would Bombay have so many? I'm assuming that, uh, you know, it's a city where, I mean, obviously a lot of these came up at a time when, you know, wristwatches weren't common and architecture obviously served an additional social responsibility. And, and so uh, a lot of these buildings had clocks on them, which meant that people, as they negotiated the city on work or otherwise, uh, looked up at these buildings to, to know the time. You also find them, like I said, on, on say religious buildings. These would become like markers. These are places where communities congregated. They were like community landmarks within neighborhoods. So these buildings also became landmarks in, in their own way. Sorry, uh, this, like I said, this also became a way of studying the city. I mean, you know, in over 23 years, when I look at some of, all, a lot of these buildings have been shot over a period of time. Mult on multiple occasions. So when I look at some of the older pictures, vis-a-vis -vis some of the pictures that you finally saw in the exhibition, uh, which are the latest images, I mean, you would see how the city has changed over the years. For instance, if you were to look at the photograph of the Sassoon clock tower, which is at the Jijamata Udyan, you will not be able to replicate that picture today because you will probably see Planet Godridge looming at the back. Uh, if you look at the photograph of the Bhuleshwar Ram Mandir, for instance, the older picture has has a clean sky. I mean, now the sky is pretty much blocked off by a high rise that is coming up, and which also dwarfed the Ram Mandir. If you look at, for instance, the Koja Shia Jamaat Khana uh, at Masjid, you will see the Bhindi Bazaar redevelopment 
happening at the back and and the number of high rises that are that are kind of shooting up uh, <coughs> Uh, you know, I often get asked about how I, I uh, happen to find these buildings. It's, it's very curious. I mean, for a, for, a, for a street photographer, you know, it's, it's very common for us while we are walking around the city to kind of develop uh, a 180 degree uh, sense of vision uh, of things happening around us. But I think because of my peculiar uh, preoccupation, I also kind of develop this habit of looking 90 degrees vertical and uh, so very often when I'd be walking around the city maybe I'm with a friend and we're talking I would very often find my eyes you know so unconsciously kind of traveling up the facade of buildings uh, there's also been serendipitous ways in which I found I remember kind of being at a bookshop and going through my friend Taiwan Mehta's book and suddenly I spotted a photograph uh, of uh, of of a, of a drinking water fountain at uh, at Masjid. Uh, this was the case of Jinayak Piao. I I remember my mother one day told me about a clock that she had spotted during a bus ride. This was the Princess Triumphal Arch uh, at Cadbury Junction. And what's interesting is, I don't think my mother was somebody who I thought had a habit of of looking around her. Uh, so my so I, I started thinking that you know maybe my my madness was beginning to uh, affect people around me as well, <clears throat> and I also got this feeling very often that uh, you know as as I was on the hunt for these clocks that these clocks were also playing hide and seek with me, kind of teasing me very often. I remember once being in a cab uh, stuck in a traffic jam near Nagpara Junction, just looking out. And suddenly finding a clock there. I mean, I'd never, I'd walked those neighborhoods, but never on Duncan Road. Uh, I don't know what what are the chance that you would find. So serendipity was a was a was an important uh, factor. I uh, at one point, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, about four five years back, I put up a Facebook post uh, requesting my friends on. On, on Facebook to, to help me find a few more clocks and it was interesting because that led to me finding a few others I mean like the Gram Devi Devale which a friend found uh, another friend uh, told me about a clock which was just above the door of an elevator in the foyer of a building on Firocha Mehta Road that's pretty unusual clock actually uh, so uh, one of the things that I am very often asked is how many of these clocks are actually working well to be honest not too many uh, just about a handful and the issues are quite complex I mean for instance uh, you know most of these clocks date back to say you know uh, of, of say British vintage uh, a lot of those factories uh, a lot of those companies which kind of manufactured them the factories which produce the parts a lot of those have shut down uh, the people who could repair them are, are slowly uh, kind of disappearing. Um, so in, in, in a certain way, that whole ecosystem that existed around these clocks is slowly getting dismantled. Uh, and it's probably got to do with the fact that it doesn't serve the kind of original purpose that it once did. This, this is uh, Mohammed Bhai Damani. Uh, he's the guy who actually repaired the, the Sassoon dock clock you know, which you see on top of the clock tower at the gate. And that's the Sassoon dock. Uh, that's, that's, uh, the gentleman there is Raj Kumar. He's an employee of the Western Railway. And along with his colleague, Norbert uh, DeMello, uh, look after the clock, uh, which is at the Western Railway locomotive workshop. It's also one of the oldest uh, clocks in the city. It's about eight, of 1889 is when it got installed. Uh, and, uh, you know, Norbert, uh, sorry, Rajkumar uh, told me that I mean, they're probably the last two people who can take care of it and they're both up for retirement very soon. And he kind of laments about, uh, I don't know who's going to be looking after this clock after us. Uh, this clock is still kind of in, in working condition. The railways are very proud of, of that fact. Uh, and they told me that it kind of loses about seven minutes a month. Uh, 
that's Fulchan Nivas again a building uh, which may, some of you may be familiar with you may have seen it in in passing in movies and stuff like that this is also an unusual building because uh, it had uh, one of uh, you know bombay's uh, it had actually not one of it had bombay's first revolving uh, neon sign uh, on top of it uh, it was a mercedes benz neon sign uh and uh you know sunil zaveri who you see in this photograph here in, in the original clock room and his wife had interesting stories to tell us and uh, they also mentioned one of the problems is uh you know for for the own for owners given the kind of low rent that they receive thanks to uh thanks to the rent control act uh it is very difficult for them to maintain the building his wife incidentally told me how uh you know a, a dish at uh, cream center which is on the on the ground floor costs much more than the rent that they often uh collect from from the tenants uh this is uh an interesting one this is bhagat bhavan on sv road at villepale uh one of the two private residences that you that that are there in the city that we found uh, mr janak bhagat who you see in this photograph mm -hmm. here uh has the mechanism of the clock uh which incidentally was installed by by german engineers is i mean has has the mechanism in his bedroom he uh it requires to be wound every 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 week and sundays is his day when he does that <coughs> uh like i said most of the clocks uh are are dead uh if one can call it that this is this is the one at the at shridhar balchandra and company at prathana samaj uh it's it's actually a shop it's a shop it's a cloth shop i mean it is sell the navari sarees and the day that we went and met them uh was actually the day they were shutting shop uh so the shop is shut now the clock kind of exists but it doesn't work uh that's that's the one which a friend pointed out uh it's an unusual one it's on top of the door of an elevator again dead uh the hands are missing this is a very common thing in most clocks here especially the art deco ones where the hands have gone missing that rupawala terrace uh <clears throat> again as you can see uh you know the dial is smashed uh the mechanism is is gone missing from the back uh aurora cinema it's it's a clock it's one of my little regrets in the in this project that the couple of them which i which i had spotted but i was too late to go and photograph them the aurora cinema clock i had seen it while growing up in bombay but uh, by the time i actually managed to photograph it uh, the parts had actually rusted during one of bombay's rains and uh, it 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 kind of was sold off uh, by by the staff that's an unusual one again this brabon stadium most people do not remember uh this clock uh that that vacant space that you see there that's where the clock used to be usually it used to be blocked uh by the tree uh that's shanti sadan apartments that you see here that cavity uh that circular cavity that used to be a clock uh been missing for many years uh and now the family puts out a bowl of water uh for for birds uh this is probably the old, A, a rare picture now because uh, you don't see the clock anymore. Uh, the clock has since gone missing. It had gone for repairs, and then they just forgot to collect it uh, from the repairs. Nobody knows where where the clock is. Uh, that's the Bhatia Wadi Chowl uh, at at uh, Kalba Devi Road. Uh, again, one of the the last pictures of it because now it's burned down. I, I don't think this project of mine uh, is. I'm a little uncomfortable to say that the project is over uh because I don't know if there are a few more which are lurking uh which I haven't noticed as yet. Uh during the show some people actually told me about uh a few. Uh I'm not sure if those would qualify uh as as public clocks but in case you you happen to find any uh do do give give a shout. Uh I think this this project needs a lot of citizens like you uh to be collaborative mm -hmm. and part of it thank you